hands with them, they feel they feel they are invincible. They feel they are untouchables. Musa, I think Chico, I, I may say something because sometimes when you see somebody stealing and then you're not even talking about him stealing, you are still a thief. Because uh, you, you spoke about Besum and you said that uh, supporters in Zambia, they saw him drinking and then they hit him. Sometimes even we, maybe journalists or friends, they're seeing our players doing something, but they're relaxing. And then when the damage has already been done, that is the time now you're coming to say, if you are really my friend, tell me that, you know what, Musa, whatever you're doing is because of the nation. I love you and I know that in, in five years to come, I don't want to see you walking in the street asking for money. And that is the time now we need as a friend to say that, you know what, Musa, this is what is happening. Don't do it. It, Actually, it really I, 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 I'm sorry, I, 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 Michael. I just want to point out that Musa is 100% right that it is our responsibility, myself, yourself, Mike, and Mutuota, to actually put these players in line. We'll, sh we'll bear some of that uh, pro uh, problem, or we'll bear the blame for that, but we also have to ensure that the technical bench tell us what they've been doing. And before we get to that, before we get back to you, Musa, Mike, you can quickly react. No, I want Musa to answer on that because I was, I was on fire. These guys, I was under fire by saying that I don't think Dennis is good enough to play. I am confident enough to say again, Dennis needs a lot of much fitness. I don't know where he plays right now. There are stories all over that he signed a contract in Saudi Arabia or is it Dubai or whichever team that is. There are stories that he wants to join Gormaya just to play and keep fit. When he's called to the team and you ask, they say unattached or something like that. It doesn't say. It says he plays in Saudi Arabia or whatever country that is. We had three unattached players making the final squad. What are you doing to that 19-goal striker sitting on the bench, yet an unattached player is on there? And what did the fans do? Second half starting? Anytime he touched the ball, sub. That's what they were doing. And Mike, Get Mike, him out. Mike, maybe it's not just if me. I may just say something about Dennis. Remember what I said, I think, in the last show. I told you that maybe Dennis is going to give us 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And in that 20 minutes where Dennis was playing, he really made the defenders of Zambia knowing that there is a striker here. And we had a game plan. Mind you, the, the injury for Paul Weira changed everything in our plan. Uh, you know what, I want us, uh, to, uh, to move away from Dennis Oliej uh, because we spoke in length about him on uh, playback, which you can catch on Monday, and actually go back to this discussion. So there was allegedly, again, that word pops up, um, you know, a sex scandal of sorts, for lack of a better phrase or description. There was also allegedly a party in camp the night before the game where drinks were involved and players were drinking, another allegation, and it is becoming the norm, as we saw from that Facebook comment. Mm -hmm. How many times, Musa, did you sleep in camp? How many times did the head coach, Bobby Williamson, sleep in camp or spend time with the players? No, Bobby has been, uh, he has not been sleeping in camp. More, more or less, we only have to the two managers and me and uh, the assistant coach, we normally see them sleep in camp. More or less since I think the time which I was playing for the national team, I've never seen a coach who's sleeping mm -hmm. in camp. Most of the coaches normally go back to their, their places to make sure that the assistant coach are looking whatever is happening in the team country. manager. And in this country. Okay. And that is why we always talk about the structure, because once you come and sleep in a very good place, the coach will never go to his place. He'll just know that, okay, let me go and sit with the, oh, sleep with the players. But wait, again, wait, 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 wait. Uh, that comment, that means you can put players in a bad place that the coach can't feel safe and comfortable sleeping no, no, in? No, no, no. In, in yet the coach of, will... No, no, no. In, in a sense fair. of... No, don't try to get something <laughs> on me and then we put it... You know, in a sense of the coach felt like we are professional in life, we can look after ourselves. Uh -huh. For me, it's very disappointing to hear that, you know, you know, after working, coming back to the country, you know, staying even in South Africa for 17 years, come back to the country. I'm not here because of Musa. I'm here to come and change something to the boys who are coming in. Because sometimes when you look at somebody who's there, we tend to have that thing of, you know what, this is Musa, why is he there? But we're here to lift Kenyan football. Here's the funny thing. Uh, Musa, a quick question while we wrap this part up. Do you bear any blame? Do you shoulder any blame with the alleged occurrences in camp? No, for me, I'm very, first of all, I'm very disappointed to hear whatever allegation has been coming to the camp because uh, we have been working hard. You know, for me, making a name, first of all, for 17 years and then to come and rule it because of somebody who doesn't have his goal or ambition, it is very bad. But when it comes to the playing side, for me, more or less, maybe it didn't work. You know, we had some problem. We need to go back to the drawing board and see what we can do. But again, with the allegation which is coming in, I'm very disappointed you know, with whatever's coming. But again, tomorrow the team manager is taking the report. He's going to tell the people what has been happening because I think for me, majority of the things are the technical side. And we'll be waiting for that report, won't we? All of us that you can catch those stories and what transpires, supersport.com. Make sure you join them. Speaking of, we were with you 
uh, Mutuiri also works at Capital FM as a sports editor, and we were there, and we were looking at Zambia. Beat Kenya, immediate friendly. Rwanda had a game, immediately stay in camp, and they have a friendly uh, over the weekend. What's going on against Gabon, if I, if I may point out? What's going on with Kenya? Kenya, we simply take football as a joke. Our federation decides, you know what? We can cancel friendlies because of flights and all that. Which other friendly was cancelled everywhere in the world? Our neighbors, Tanzania, Senegal went to play in South Africa. It means we are not serious about football. It is a sad indictment that we had the best chance to make the AFCON because finishing among the top in this group is not something hard. Zambia and, and are using Raji under 23s. They gave four of them debuts. We were playing a, a Congo Brazzaville. It's a team we can beat. Guinea-Bissau, it's a team we can beat. We had a realistic chance of going back to the AFCON. But as long as we continue taking football as if it's a matter of po a popular concept, when you were playing to the gallery, for example, during a match of such significant importance, the president decides it's the best time to campaign. What happened to the banners? They were burnt. Thank you. <laughs> that is how we should ban that administration. <laughs> Chico, the other thing is, we, we go into camp, we catalyze our own downfall. I question why do we have to camp in Nairobi West? Honestly speaking, Nairobi West, will you police these players? You must police them, but how many of you will need, you need to do the job? They get out of the gate two steps away. There's a all, club. There's a, there clubs. Clubs, and left, right and centre. Everywhere. What happened to camping in Kasarani, no man's land, where if for you to get to the gate, it's, it's a big issue. There are four checks before you get out there. The go questions will be asked. Go to <laughs> the, the, the only pub closes at five. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw a tweet earlier on that said, uh, as soon as they get to E10, they'll ruin our athletes. In fact, have Yego throw them out <laughs> as soon as they get there. So clearly, Harambe stars, your team is not welcome there, Musa Otieno. Mutoto Mutuiri has put it very clearly. We take football in Kenya as a joke. And you know who the laughing stock is? You. 30,000 fans turn up in Nyayo to watch a team that they believe will usher in a era of success. And the joke happens to be on you wearing your Kenyan jersey. We'll take a quick break. It is also about making money as Mutuiri and Al Kenya have pointed out. Football can make you money. Gormahia seemingly understanding that quite well. Dingo Mondi on Twitter, disband this team right now. No need to continue with the campaign. Concrete, uh, concentrate rather on under 17 for the next three years. And the thoughts also coming in saying that if Musa and company cannot control the cab for a week, they should go. Arnold, you weren't here the first segment. Your thoughts as we wrap up that part. You know, the first thing I'll do is thank Kenyans for coming out in numbers. I asked them last week to do that, and I was there. As a fan, by the way, Larry, I'm one of those guys who was wearing a Kenya jersey. I was not working, and it was brilliant seeing yesterday them full. And for better or for worse, this is what beguiles and annoys me about Harambe Stars and the Kenya national team setup. Where we've got, a, we've got a populace that believes in the national team, that loves their national team. No club in Kenya gets as much support as Harambe Stars does. And yet... To lose is one thing. To lose a game they should have won is another thing. Now, for Kenyans to know that they lost a game they should have won, not so much maybe because their players are not able to play, as it is because they're distracted in ways that could have waited until that Sunday night, you know, it's a disappointment. Musa apologized. Um, I'll also apologize because I'm one of the poor told fans to come out and watch the game. But you know what? It's a national team. It's good that they've supported the national team. And if the next Arambe Stars game has got 5,000 people, you can't blame Arambe them. Stars should not complain. They're the ones who've thoroughly disappointed their team. Be like the athletes. Be like the runners. Party after you win, not before you win. And, you know, one more thing, Lawi. Let's be decent. Let's keep things decent. You know, at the World Cup, many teams let their players have their wives or girlfriends over. They let them have sexual relations. But there's a decent, moral, human way of doing this. And with the way Harambe has done it, 
makes you question whether the name Star should be next to the name in the first place. There we go. Thoughts of Arnold Kanyangonda. And I just want to wrap up with a tweet from Nancy Okuta, who says, I said it before and I repeat, international players are just overrated. Players should comprise of local players. Food for thought for Musa and Bobby Williamson. And I must say, James Okabi, who you can catch on Monday night on Off the Press, pointed that out to me. He asked me, 2004, Chico, 2008, successful years. How many players were local based? There's a cohesion. There's an understanding. And, 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 and that's a totally different argument altogether. But those are the thoughts of Twitter, of course, and on Facebook. So get your comments running through. We'll be trying to screen them and react to some of them. Speaking of which, there are some good stories when it comes to football. Gorma here, the app. Mike, tell us about that. Download it first. <laughs> <laughs> I shall do that, actually, as you tell me. Then, then you get to use it. I yeah. am doing that exactly. I mean, it's, it's, we, we've talked about it here. The teams, clubs have to find a way of making money. You know very well that with an app, the more people download, the more popular it becomes, and it's a way of making money for you as a team, as actually even passing out information and stuff. But the bigger qu question should be how do they intend to use it? Because having that app is one thing. Who will manage it and how will it be used? That's the other question. What's the I, app I, all about? I can answer that question um, because the, the guy who's doing the app is actually a good friend of mine from high school, Tony Malala, and he's doing it in conjunction with Tony Anelka, who's been doing quite a bit of the work of, uh, of uh, the website of Gormahia. And the idea of the app is very simple. It's like the apps you have for other clubs worldwide. Bayern Munich has some, um, Barcelona has the same, same thing. But it's a chance for you to interact more closely with the club you love. And in this case, it's Gormaya Football Club for the fans and supporters. Now, to be able to access the app, there's a fee you pay. And I think the minimum is like 100 shillings. And the way it's been explained to me is, I think it's 85% or something like that. Anyway, from 7 to 85% of the, of the money is, uh, goes to the club. And then 15 to 30% is kept by the app developers, which is the same model everywhere. Whether you're on Amazon or Apple App Store or on Google App Store, uh, any money that is raised, any revenue raised by the app, the app manufacturer keeps some and then the app vendor keeps some. In this case, the app vendor is, uh, is JTH Consulting. The ones who made the app, they'll keep a small percentage, but the bulk of the funds will go to Gormahi. And the good thing is, um, once you download and you make your payment, you can actually really follow and see what your money is going to do. They're selling six-month memberships for now. Uh, I think it's a great thing. It's completely different from, say, Supersport app or Gold.com app, which you know, is very generic and very eclectic. This one just focuses on Gormahi, and there'll be exclusive, uh, exclusive stuff as well. I, I downloaded a better version of it. They've been updating it for the last, I think, six weeks. It's a great app, Larry. Oh, talk about that app. I'm actually downloading it right now. It's called Gormahia FC Fan Club app. Just type in Gormahia and it takes you right there. But, you know, while we're finishing and downloading, and I'll check out how it really works, you can keep an eye and watch this while we sort this out. One of the greatest challenges that football clubs in the region face has always been a lack of funding to support club activities. Crowdfunding is generally the solution used to raise funds, but logistics in the past have also made it difficult to manage. That is until now, as Kenyan Premier League champions Gormahi FC, in conjunction with JTH Consulting Limited, a hybrid technology company, have released the first ever football club app in East Africa. What we're launching this morning is uh, known as Gormahi uh, Fan Club application. Uh, it's one of uh, the attempts by the club to at least use innovative uh, ways of raising funds for the club rather than rely in the conventional and traditional uh, sponsorship uh, model of raising funds. An innovative way of not only raising money for the club, but also a way for the fans to connect with each other and with the club that they love so much. It also gives Gormahia fans a sense of belonging and ownership. A real opportunity for the fans to be able to support their club and also to interact and create that kind of community. It's um, the first ever football application in uh, East Africa. Um, a lot of sporting clubs in, in, in Kenya are um, struggling to, to, you know, to raise money. They are trying to get, they are in a bid to get sponsors to, 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 to give them funding to support club activities. So this is just an innovative way for having the funds um, support the, the, the club through crowdfunding. The app itself, uh, it is uh, free to download and install, um, but uh, the main purpose of the app is to register as, a, as an official Gormaya fan. So the minimum contribution to the club, it is uh, 100 Kenya shillings. 
which will um, register you as a fan for uh, a period of six months. With uh, your official fan number and uh, PIN, you will be able to access the app, uh, connect to other Gormaya fans, participate in, uh, um, for example, uh, community events and so on. Following in the footsteps of some of Europe's top football clubs like Bayern Munich FC and Barcelona FC, it is envisaged that this kind of innovation will create avenues for revenue generation, particularly through crowdfunding, advertising, content monetization, ticket sales and merchandising. It may also serve as a model for other sporting clubs regionally. It's just, we hope that it will serve as a model for not only football clubs, but for just the sporting fraternity in general, especially when it comes to um, raising money for the club and doing so many other things, especially in the digital marketplace. Of course, um, it would be a good thing if other clubs would also be able to, you know, have this kind of um, uh, applications and have this kind of this kind of innovation for for the sake of, of their funds and for the sake of the, the clubs themselves. With the aim to become one of the most downloaded sporting apps in Kenya, the official Gormahia Football Club app features all the latest team news, videos and scores streamed live to the fans' phone and web-enabled device including smart TVs and tablets. The app will first initially be available on Android. Uh, later it will be uh, on all the major platforms such as iPhone, uh, Lumia, Windows Phone and so on, Blackberry. And uh, we also plan uh, at a later stage to bring it to other web-enabled devices such as smart TVs, which are now uh, becoming more and more commonplace. For 100 shillings, Gore fans will be given unlimited access to the features for six months. All right, so I just thought I should show you that, yes, I have downloaded this app. It, of course, wants me to register. I just want to point out that uh, it says official fan club, and we've heard that you become an official fan. I am a fan of 16 teams in the Kenya Premier League, which is now sponsored by Sports Pesa. And as long as a team brings in an app, I am willing to spend 1,600 shillings to support each and every team. And I can see the smiles from Michael Kinyi there. So, yes, <laughs> right now, according to this app, I am an official Gore Mahia fan, and I I am supporting the Kenya football through Gormahi and any other team that comes up with, you know, an industrious idea like this. Guys, ge generally, your thoughts on this? Look, just, just real quick, you know, I mean, people ask who owns Gormahi and the word is Gormahi is owned by the fans. Okay, you own the club. I'm pretty sure as a Gormahi fan, you can afford 100 shillings every six months. Now, uh, from what I hear, every single Gormahi fan supposedly has a smartphone, has a smartphone, so it's going to be easy, you know. <laughs> now, if, if you do the maths, if 100,000 fans... Just 100,000. And the word is, Gormahi has anywhere from three to six million fans. But if 100,000 fans decide to contribute, 100 shillings can contribute more, and by all means contribute more. I know I did. Okay? If 100,000 fans contribute the minimum 100,000 every 100 shillings every six months, that is 10 million shillings. If you put that in a calendar, which is what the season covers, that is 20 million shillings, and that is enough to, you know, if you use that money judiciously, judiciously to support the club. So in short, what I'm saying is, if you really claim you own the club, put your money where your mouth is, support uh, the biggest club in the country. Speaking about money, mouth, what about bread? Looks like it's a better deal, Musa, Mike. <laughs> you know, funny enough, you know, in South Africa, you know, they, they, always say, this, they always say the black people normally like bread. But it's funny <laughs> enough to see that, you know, Gormaya always get a sponsorship of bread, you know. So I don't know what is happening because maybe the bread will go with fish together. Of course. And then uh, even Jesus <laughs> fed guys with bread and fish. Yeah. But it is nice at least to see that, you know.